To begin, we would like to acknowledge where we are tonight. We are on the treaty territory of the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation and the traditional territory of the Anishinaabe, the Haudenosaunee, and the Huron-Wendat. Uh, these First Nations have been on this land and looking after it for, in some cases, thousands of years, and we're grateful to have the opportunity to work in this community. We want to thank all the organizations and the people who make everything we do at TIFF possible, including tonight's screening, beginning with our lead sponsor, Bell, our major sponsors, RBC, L'Oreal Paris, and Visa, and our major supporters, the Government of Ontario, Telefilm Canada, and the City of Toronto for their continued support. This film is part of our gala program at the festival, and that is generously sponsored by Fairmont Hotels and Resorts. Thank you to them. And thanks also, thanks also to our members, our donors, individuals, maybe many of you in the audience tonight who are supporting us and helping us to create a more informed, engaged, and connected world through film. If you want to be a member or a donor, you can do it very easily. Just go online to tiff.net slash join. A reminder that this film is eligible for our most important prize. This is the prize that everyone seems to covet. It's called the Grolsch People's Choice Award, and it's voted on by you. So we do need you to vote. We want you to vote, and you do that by going online to tiff.net slash vote. Big thanks to Warner Brothers Pictures for providing us with this film. It's a big year for them, and we're, we're grateful for their support. Thank you, Warner Brothers. And thank you to Todd Phillips for bringing this movie here straight from the Venice Film Festival where it won the Golden Lion for the best film in Venice. Todd was born in Brooklyn, studied at uh, the Tisch School of the Arts at New York University, has made a number of films which might not have prepared us for Joker. They include Road Trip, Old School, Starsky and Hutch, The Hangover Trilogy, and War Dogs. He has put together a remarkable cast that includes Zazie Beetz, Robert De Niro, and Joaquin Phoenix in a transformative performance. You know, a lot's gonna be said about this movie. You get to be the first audience in North America to see it. It is a remarkable achievement dramatically technically and emotionally, and I'm so glad that Todd's come to introduce it to you this evening. Please join me in welcoming the director of Joker, Todd Phillips. I feel like there was sarcasm in his voice when he was reading my credits, but okay. I'm gonna let that go, but it did remind me of something about this festival. The movies that he didn't mention where I started making documentary films and, my ver and what always struck me about the Toronto Film Festival is that it, audiences, the audiences are movie lovers. And the first film I made was a documentary about a punk rock singer named Gigi Allen. I made it when I was at NYU. And uh, I remember filling out the application form for the Toronto Film Festival and sending in the uh, entry fee and uh, getting rejected, fair enough. <laughs> You didn't run it back then. Um, but this festival has always meant the world to me, and it's just the, the best crowds here. Um, we're excited. We're excited that this is our North American premiere, as he says. Uh, there's a lot of um, people here tonight that worked on the movie, a lot of people that are in the movie, and they'll come out for the Q&A. Uh, Bradley Cooper's here, and it's funny because <laughs> Last year, I was sitting out there when we uh, premiered Star is Born, which, uh, and I just remember being so inspired, and it was literally two days before we started shooting Joker, and Bradley's always been an inspiration to me, but that film and what he did with that film just inspired me so much, and I thought to myself, wow, imagine if we're here next year with Joker. Uh, so thank you, Bradley, but like I said, after we're gonna do a Q&A, we're gonna bring up some of the actors, so we'll get the movie started on time, and I'll warn you, it's fucking bonkers. <laughs> it's, a, <laughs> it's a slow burn with really some beautiful performances, and uh, I hope you enjoyed Joker. Thank you. 
And I want to start by asking you, Todd, when it comes to reinventing an icon like the Joker, most of us in one generation or another grew up with a version of this supervillain. Where do you start in reinventing him? What are the, the building blocks of, of this version? Well, what's great about the character is, you know, even if you read the comic books, I think in The Killing Joke he says, you know, I prefer my past to be multiple choice. What's, what's great about the Joker is that, A, he's an unreliable narrator, and B, he really has no origin story. So we had a freedom, you know, we picked and chose a little bit from some of the comics and some of the past of what to use, but there was a real freedom with it, and it was very liberating. Even the guys at DC, uh, the people at DC had said, um, yeah, you can just do what you want, take a shot at just doing something different. So the, the real idea was just about doing an in-depth character study, a deep dive into, like, what if you take a comic book movie and you do it in a different way and you just do a character study, a character study that very much was, you know, motivated and, and um, from, from, from some of the films from the 70s, obviously, Bob was in some of those movies. There are other movies, whether it's Network or... Death Wish that 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 find their sort of um, motivation for us, um, but it really started weirdly enough with this silent film, The Man Who Laughs, which funny enough we didn't even know, but was an inspiration for Bill Finger and Bob Kane when they came up with the Joker character, which we actually didn't even know when we started it. So it all started from there, and then we kind of were backwards engineering. How do you make a movie about a guy in you know white face and green hair? and run it through as realistic a lens as possible. Well, we don't believe that if you fall into a vat of acid, you get white face and a green hair. So everything was like, let's run it through as realistic a lens as possible. And it was, it was actually a really fun movie to write. I wrote it with Scott Silver, who's not here tonight, but um, in that we had no rules. I can't imagine this Joker played by anybody else but Joaquin Phoenix. Uh, I wonder... <laughs> At what point did he come into the process of making the film? Why was it important to cast Joaquin? And Joaquin, I want to ask you afterwards in terms of your decision to take on the role and what was it that attracted you to it? Well, when I went to Scott Silver with the nugget of the idea, like, hey, do you want to write this with me? This is what it's going to be. This is what we're th I'm thinking. I said, I want to write it for Joaquin Phoenix. I didn't know Joaquin at all. I, like everybody here, knew and loved his work. Um, and I just thought, man, for me as a writer, forget as a director, as a writer, it always helps me to write with an actor in mind. Whether we end up getting that actor or not is another story, but it just helps. And um, so we just really started writing it uh, for Joaquin, and then getting Joaquin was a whole nother thing. <laughs> <laughs> Easier said than done. But you did it. We, we, we did it, he's here. I always say, he never really signed on to the movie. One day he just showed up at a wardrobe fitting. And I was like, okay. <laughs> Joaquin, what was it about this role that attracted you? Um, <clears throat> well, I guess, um, I guess in some ways it seemed limitless in how you could interpret the character and what you could do with it. It didn't feel like there were any rules. Um, and that was very attractive to me, but really it was, um, cl close your ears. <laughs> it was meeting Todd, and um, he has such a unique understanding of this character in the film and the, the tone. Um, it was just really uh, attractive. I, I mean, uh, honestly, it wasn't an easy decision at, at first, but I knew that I really liked Todd and I wanted to work with him. Um, and, yeah, I, I think that, uh, honestly, I didn't fucking know. <laughs> I, I didn't, yeah, okay. but, but then there was something that was drawing me towards it, and um, it just evolved, like, as we worked together, it went through prep, it started becoming something more than I could have anticipated, um, and it was one of the greatest experiences of, of my career, um, and it, I think, gave us back so much, like every day, whatever we put into it, it was just so energizing and exciting and inspiring. 
Was there anything that changed once you were on board and you began to work together in rehearsals or in, in just dra new drafts of the scripts that, that Joaquin brought to it? I mean, Joaquin, Zazie, by everybody. I mean, one of the things coming from comedy is, you know, I always used to describe comedy as, well, the way I do it, it's jazz, not math, comedy. And But I really, it's actually how I make movies. And it's not, it's not written in stone. There's a very loose atmosphere. And I love feedback from actors. And somebody on the crew could have a great idea. And we keep it open. So much changed from the, when, me, when I was going up to his house, basically begging him to do the movie, not begging, but like having these meetings and talking about the movie for months. It's okay, you beg. It's I okay. beg, I beg. <laughs> no, I didn't beg. At one point, I go, so like, I keep coming up here every day, and like, at some point, you, you, gotta, you, gotta, co you gotta just say, are you in or not? He's like, that's not how I do it. That's not how I work. <laughs> it's like... And then like, after we were shooting, you said, you're welcome. I did, yeah. <laughs> because I, he goes, what do you want me to say? I said, how about thank you for bringing me this? I'm talking about when we were meeting to do it, but I was kidding. But anyway, we keep it really loose, and, and I think it helps energize the actors. It helps, um, it informs me in a way. I mean, I think we changed it every day. I was saying, we did a thing with Zazie the other day, and I was saying, I don't think we changed any part more than Zazie. Um, and, and we would meet in my trailer, before we would shoot that night or day, and the three of us would kind of like take apart what we're gonna do and kind of redo it. And there's something about, I think, that looseness for this movie that really, really worked. Zazie, could you just talk a little bit about what you brought to the role and how you might have helped it evolve, your, your role? Um, I think my role started evolving because I think um, Arthur Fleck started evolving, and I think we were um, kind of maneuvering my place um, and sort of the motivations of Arthur and what catalyzes his decisions and his sort of emotional arc throughout the film. And we were placing me in there. Um, and sort of as Todd was saying, it was sort of a very um, creatively loose and open set. And so there was room for movement. And also you guys shot kind of incredibly quickly. So there was like, room to add scenes and to try scenes again in different ways, which um, which is great to have that flexibility. And so, um, honestly, like, you know, you inviting me into that trailer, I, I felt really um, included and, um, and like I was a part of telling the story in a way that I don't usually feel on a set. And, um, yeah, I think I just kind of, I went with the flow and threw in my thoughts. And Robert, I have a question for you as well, because you're not just a character, you're not just playing a character who's, you know, interacting with Arthur's character, but your previous films, Taxi Driver and King of Comedy, are also a layer that's in conversation with this film. What was it like to be on set, to be making this movie, not just playing that role, but knowing that your previous roles are also a part of the fabric here? Well, well, Todd, I was told about the script, that Todd told, uh, told me, well, I, I was given the script, and then Todd, I met Todd, and we talked about it, and uh, I mean, I understood all the connections and so on, and I said, oh, you know, okay. And uh, <laughs> that, 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 was, that was it. <laughs> that was it. That's it. I mean, was it ever just strange on set to, to know that, I mean, obviously in... Uh, we had no long, deep, no grand philosophical discussions okay. about it, okay. uh, though I like Todd a lot, we had a, we had a good meeting and so on, and I, uh, I forget what other we talked about this. It was, uh, we talked a little bit when we first met about, first about met. you know, one of my favorite movies, King of Comedy, and we talked about the Rupert Pumpkin character, and like, you know, and Bob told me some great stories about Jerry Lewis and working on that movie that I just, were special to me just to hear. Um, but yeah, it wasn't, just, you know, there's, it's funny because those movies are certainly, you know, inform this, but I, but I, keep, I always think, or we thought, 
It was more informed by a time in movies, more so than like one or two specific movies, you know. Um, it was more that era from whatever, 74 to 82, that I felt like there was just some beautiful, beautiful characters. Well, also, done. New York City was mythologized on film in that era yeah. as well, that the kind of the, the, the dirty, grungy New York City uh, that had totally changed uh, after that, but we saw that in movies a lot, including the movies that, that uh, you referenced. Yeah. Um, Francis, I want to ask you about playing one of the pivotal roles in this film, the mother, uh, and that must have been a complex thing because the relationship is so intense with Arthur's character, uh, and you, your character exerts such influence over him. How did the two of you develop the relationship between your two characters? Uh, we were just on set together for as long as it took to do the scenes, that's all. I mean, Todd's so wonderful, he, I, and watching the two of them sort of had these little powwows over in the corner it was quite beautiful because it just showed the intimate working relationship they had. So, you know, we just see where it went, really. And there was a lot of improv and it was great. It was simple, but it was great. Are there any things that you have to do to establish that sort of mother and son relationship so that it's convincing? Uh, you're working together perhaps for the first time, but you, well, you have to writing. play a long relationship. But you know what actors do, it's so special anyway. The audience doesn't necessarily understand how scenes are done, but it's in the writing. And, and it was beautifully in the writing. And then, you know, Todd was there to sort of shape it and guide it. And it just came about. And of course, Joaquin was there just being Arthur. And that you know, was beautiful to mm -hmm. pair with. So there's a lot of lore out there about the DC universe and that canon and where this film might eventually fit in the future of that. I don't know if you, you have thought about that. I'm sure you have thought about it, but I'm not sure if there's anything you can share in terms of where this movie is going to take the entire universe in, in terms of any shift in direction. Well, yeah, I mean, it's not really connected to that universe and it was really intentionally not. I mean, the original idea when I went to Warner's with the idea was not just about one movie, but about a label, sort of a side label to DC where you can do these kind of character study, kind of low rent, low budget movies where you get a filmmaker to come in and do some deep dive into a character. Uh, so it was never meant to connect. So I don't see it connecting to anything in the future. I think this is just this movie, you know. And finally, you know, we sometimes pigeonhole filmmakers who make a certain kind of movie. You've made a number of great comedies that have been incredibly successful all over the world. Uh, this is a, a departure of a sort, I think, for you. Will we see more films like Joker from you? Does, has this kind of given you the taste for it? I mean, I, I, I like working with just great actors. I think it's, it's the thing for a director. Joaquin wants to know, too. <laughs> <laughs> I would do anything with him. I want him to be in Hangover 4. I mean, I haven't got him the script yet. <laughs> no, but for me, it's always about the opportunity to work with great actors. And when I find great actors, I just want to work with them again and again. I mean, we, we, we made three Hangover movies, not because we were cashing in. Literally, we loved making those movies. The experience with me and Bradley and Ed and Zach was, we just became this crew, and we were excited to just do it every other year together. We couldn't believe we got the opportunity. So for me, it's always been about something interesting where you can get a great actor and just get into it, you know? Um, so I'm not, I'm not sure where it'll go. But yeah, I've never been a fan of, of, of pigeonholing people and I, I hate when it was always when it's been done to me of like well why does the guy from the hangover get to do this um but you know we'll see i'm not sure now you can do whatever you want no we did not yeah. <laughs> we are going to have to wrap it there unfortunately but I, you, I just want to ask you to please join me in thanking the incredible team from joker thank you francis conroy robert de niro zazie beats joaquin phoenix and director todd phillips